A global pandemic has thrown families together in close quarters and add to that the anxiety of a time of civil unrest and it's created a volatile mix. One expert in trauma is speaking to school principals about how they can help their students cope. Kevin Cameron is the executive director of the North American Center for Threat Assessment and Trauma Response. Thanks so much for taking the time to chat today, Kevin. Thank you. So what do we know about how COVID-19 has impacted students and families? Well, it's interesting. The, the whole dynamics associated with the worldwide pandemic has actually proven, especially in provinces like Saskatchewan and elsewhere that have been kind of relative cold spots, has been a bigger issue around quarantining uh, than the virus itself. Not that there's not fears about the virus, but that there has been a real dynamic that's been generated in homes because there's been so much literal togetherness. And the reality is, it doesn't matter how much you love somebody, being stuck together with them all the time would increase the anxiety even of the best of people. And now what we're seeing, of course, is the children and families that have had maybe some struggles even before the pandemic, this is intensifying symptoms because there's no natural break from each other. And so we have great concerns over the increasing amount of domestic violence that kids may have been subjected to, other forms of abuse, uh, and just in all honesty, high anxiety parents and caregivers who haven't really been available to take care of their kids. And so then what are they doing during that time? So these are all dominant themes that are on our mind. How does maybe this anxiety over this kind of forced closeness compare to other traumatic events that school communities here might have faced? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things about other forms of trauma is that most traumatic events um, usually have a clear starting point and an ending point often that day. So my work in the aftermath of mass shootings, sadly, or car crashes and those types of traumatic events have a start and an end that's often today. And then we just deal with traumatic aftermath. But the worldwide pandemic has been an ongoing exposure to fear associated with the virus, to for some people fear being quarantined and contained in some of those families that I've talked about, let alone the ongoing media exposure to the images of so many lives lost and then the George Floyd um, riots also and the civil unrest has really generated a lot of angst in young people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this anxiety is not uh, only for students, you mentioned parents as well, but also for educators. So what do you think is an important takeaway uh, for teachers about what they can do to make their students feel safe? So we released a set of guidelines for re-entry into the school, me and my colleagues. Every school jurisdiction in Saskatchewan has had access to them. And we're really pushing to have uh, the good four to five days before students enter into school for us to be able to, in an organized way, reach out to students and families in advance get an idea uh, as well with collaborating with mental health, child protection and other helping agencies to see maybe who has been struggling so that we don't have everybody converge day number one in school distressed, but that we can actually allow some storytelling. We can hook uh, children and families up with services if necessary. And uh, for many, we began that process even before the end of this year of sort of what we call matching resources to risk. But um, we're really supporting educators and being able to identify in advance those who might need a little extra support and then supporting parents and caregivers as well on how to talk to their kids. Uh, just on that last point, I mean, how, how what should parents be doing to make their kids feel safe? You know, one of the most interesting things out of not worldwide pandemics, but even for instance, Ebola in the Southern states when SARS hit Toronto, we do have some research around it. It was quite evident that the higher the anxiety the parents were, then the greater the symptom development of the kids. And many kids said that they didn't share with their parents how distressed they were because they knew that their parents couldn't bear the weight of it. So we're saying now, all adults, really take your own inventory, reach out to other supportive adults, and then go and approach your kids for what we call a meaningful conversation. That many kids tell us that they didn't share because nobody asked them how they were doing but genuinely reaching out to our children and, uh, and, and really saying, how have you been doing? And being open as well that we've had our own struggles. The kids will see that as an opportunity to tell the truth. And that's the truth about what it's been like for them in their homes, but also what it's been like online um, and some of the things that have happened because we knew even before the pandemic, the kids were keeping secrets about their online activity and those that they connected with. And so meaningful conversations is a huge emphasis point 
and schools and counselors within schools will have access to that information to be able to share with parents also prior to even returning to school. Well, there's definitely a long road ahead, but thanks so much for all of this today, Kevin. Thank you.